Shalom, shalom. You know, uh, let's get to the bottom of this Babylon thing. Today's Babylon. Yeah. You know, they be crying out that uh, America's not Babylon, but yet having the breast milk of Babylon America on their breath. So they stuck on the breast, so they want to say that she's not Babylon. But let's, first of all, let's get the etymology of Babylon. I'm going to read, let's go to Genesis 11. And let's start from 11, 1 and read down. So, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, they dwelt there, and they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they all, and they all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and let their confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because Yahweh did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Okay, so you notice I, you know, I change. Whenever I see Lord, I change it in my head to Yah or Yahweh. I, I, I stay away from from Lord, and if it's speaking of Yeshua, I put I'll say I'll put in their ruler. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's go down. Let's look at the etymology of the word Babel. So we see here, right here. So for Babel H eight nine four from the Hebrew concordance, and it. And it's from, it goes from, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, goes from H894 to H1101. And it says confusion, Babel, that is Babylon, including Babylonian and Babylonian Empire, Babel, Babylon. So Babel, when you see Babylon and Babel, confusion. That is in the Hebrew concordance. So when you talk about Babylon right now, and America being Babylon, right there, just with the Hebrew concordance, referring to it as confusion, I could drop the mic right there. Anybody who then refers to America at this time as Babylon, you're saying that it is the land of confusion. So all you who are out there now, crying out, whining, because Hebrews, many Hebrews who are woke are referring to America as Babylon. Be quiet, because the Hebrew concordance right here tells you it's, it's about confusion. And if you are a believer in the Most High Yah and His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, is no way that you can see this place and say that it is not about confusion. Case in point, let's let's look at something right here. All right, this is just one thing, and I'm just not going to pick on one uh, group of people because we. I'm just just going to show you something right here. We will talk about other things too that are confusing. Listen right here. This is an article. The Pacific Northwest 
dated May 10th, 2023. So it was published May 10th, 2023. Trans minors have protection for gender affirming care under new Washington state law. Minors seeking gender-affirming care in Washington will be protected from the intervention of estranged parents under a measure Gov Governor or Gov J. Inslee signed into law Tuesday. The new law is part of a wave of legislation this year in Democratic-led states intended to give refuge amid a conservative movement in which lawmakers in other states have attacked transgender rights and limited, limited on banned gender affirming care minors. Licensed shelters and host homes in Washington had generally been required to notify parents within 72 hours when a minor came into their care. Under the new law, facilities, facilities can instead contact the State Department of Children, Youth and Families, which could then attempt to reunite the family if feasible. Youths will also be allowed to stay at host homes, private volunteer homes that temporarily house young people without parental permission. With this bill, Washington leads the way by taking a more compassionate, developmentally appropriate and reasoned approach to support these youth, youth as they assess gender-affirming treatment, and reproductive health care services, Inslee said shortly before signing the measure. More than a half dozen states from New Jersey to Vermont to Colorado have passed or considered similar bills or executive orders around transgender health care, civil rights, and other legal protections. So I'm going to stop right there on that. So in other words, what the state of Washington has done and other states are following through with the same thing is they're saying that if a child decides that this child decides that they want to choose another gender, meaning that if you are a female, and you are seven years old or 10 or whatever the number may be, and you say, well, I, want, I'm a, I am a male, I'm a boy, but you are a female, and your parents are not going along with it, then that child can then go maybe to school and put in a complaint against the parent, and they will take that child out of the home and put that child in some youth facility and allow that child to make a decision on his own. The parents will lose any authority to get their child back and raise the child up in a way that they want to. Okay, so this is allowing a person who is not old enough to make any decisions for his or herself, but yet they can say that, hey, I'm a girl when you're a boy or you're a boy, and you're saying you're a girl, you're a girl, you're saying you're a boy, or they, all these different things that are confusing. Remember Babylon confusion, and this is what's going on from state to state. They are making legislation to basically support and enhance confusion. So now a boy can be a girl, a girl could be a boy, and it is being promoted, protected, and treat it as right, a right thing to do, right? And so this is what I'm talking about, and this is where confusion comes in. Why? Because it is, the, it is government authorities that are doing this. They are making legislation to 
secure this type of lifestyle when it is clearly confusion. Okay, so this is this is this right here is when we talk about Babylon in this land. This is not everywhere. This is not happening everywhere. They are trying to spread it to other places. They're on the continent of Africa trying to push it. They're trying to push it there because it is not there like that. Okay. And even, what, 15, 10 years ago, it wasn't here. You, you couldn't do this, you know. So, so when you want to talk about confusion, that's just one thing. Okay. Let's just go to remember some years ago, not long ago in the past, when the Twin Towers in New York and other things and the Pentagon was hit with planes flying into the buildings. Many people were killed. Um, New York was going up in smoke, at least the downtown part of New York, Manhattan, I believe. And, uh, so anyway, these towers were hit and it was just terrible thing. So what happened after that? After that, after America was attacked and these planes flew into the, the towers in New York, the World Trade, the executive branch, the president, and all his underlings decided that his vice president, his generals, all they decided that the Secretary of State decided that that Iraq was responsible. They linked Iraq to it and said they had weapons of mass destruction. But they also clearly, clearly Openly let it be known that the leader of it was Bin Laden. So you had two things going on. So Iraq's president, right, Saddam Hussein, is over Iraq. But Bin Laden, who was the leader of the attack, was of Saudi Arabia, an ally of the U.S. He and all his men had nothing to do with Iraq. Nevertheless, this government intertwined that and then went into Iraq and destroyed Iraq and said they were looking for weapons of mass destruction and they made it appear as that Iraq, I mean, they focused completely on Iraq, 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 Iraq had all to do with the towers in New York being hit and the Pentagon being hit. So they riled up the nation, riled up the troops, and made Iraq into the enemy when it was clearly the men of Saudi Arabia in which the U.S. was allied with. It was their family members or their people to hit the towers, right? Bin Laden. So all this war on Iraq and all this, and I'm not sympathizing with Iraq. I'm not sympathizing. I'm just telling the story of how it went. All this war with Iraq and rallying up the troops and they attacked America when all the whole time it was Bin Laden and those of Saudi Arabia in Afghanistan, those those places. Why did they then go into Iraq? Why? Because Iraq had these oil fields in which they took control of, right? Because the regime that was in office at the time was about oil. Okay? So they took the oil, they destroyed that country, took the oil, knowing that it had nothing to do with the towers being destroyed in New York, right? So, ain't that confusion? 
Because think about all the chaos. You rile up the troops. You rile up the people. And make it seem, trying to make a connection with them that it is Iraq and Saddam Hussein who is the threat. When clearly it was not. But the confusion, just all the confusion, the hype, the media and everything got it all going and, and, and gave themselves the authority to go into a country that did not do the attack. As a matter of fact, according to the whole, according to the media at that time, it slipped in that he even, the president of Iraq knew he had no power to deal with the power of the U.S. military, and he allowed them inspectors to come in and inspect his land to look for, to look for weapons of mass destruction, and and they found none then. But they still went in. They 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 went in, but they they didn't really want that, so they they just quickly just went on and gave themselves the authority to make a preemptive attack. Think about that. Ain't that confusion? What is confusion, right? But then after they went into Iraq and they took over the oil fields, you would think that the price of oil for the American people would have gone down. I mean, you did go in and you took the oil fields of another country. You got the, you got the oil in your possession now. So once they got the oil in their possession, guess what happened? And you knew, you know, that's what it was all about because the Iraqis start burning the oil fields once once the attack started. But look what happened. Now you got the oil fields, and the price of oil jumped up so high that the U.S. citizens had never seen gas prices that high ever, and they have been up high since then. So ain't that confusion? So now you got all that was taken. Now you would think that at least if you're going to go out and you're going to use all the services of the people, the taxpayers' dollars to fight a war that was unjust, taking bloodshed from the people because those American soldiers that went to war some of them were maimed, some of them died, blood was shed. And you go and you then take possession of a country that was rich in oil, and you have all the possession of the resources. And instead of saying, well, at least since we got these resources, the Americans are going to benefit. No, no, you got it and you put it on the world market or whatever, those who were in cahoots with the U.S. government, the old boys, no, they enriched themselves. The prices of oil went up at a rate that we had never seen. Not only did it go up like that, they then also said that the world was running out of oil at the time and said that it was a shortage on oil. So to justify but now, what happened to that shortage? That that was a maybe fifteen years, twenty years ago. Is uh, it was a while ago. I, I can't remember right now how long ago. But the, all that talk about oil shortages and all that—that's gone now. The still the the the, oil, uh, the the earth was running out of oil. That's why the price was going up. No, they got a hold of that oil, and once they got it, they they basically swell their own pockets up. Right? Ain't that confusion? See, see, but see, they, the confusion here is paint America as an angel of light. Okay, oh, somebody is attacking America. Oh, let's go get them. We got to, they trying to take away our freedom. Let's go get them. Let's go and, and, and put this threat down. And this is what they do. And, they, and you got all these people who are patriotic all behind it and everything is as if America is a hero. But at the end of the day, America is doing something 
that is of wickedness and evil, but making itself look like the angel of light. Ain't that confusion? So I can drop the mic right there when we talk about Babylon. A very powerful, Babylon is a very powerful system. It is confusion. So, you are who are on the breasts of America, a.k.a. Babylon. Stop crying with the sun down here. Remember, the Hebrew Concordance says that Babel is confusion. So let's look at America's film industry. The leading agency in the film industry is Hollywood. See this man right here? His name is Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. He, in this picture, was playing Moses, Moshe. Bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt. This film and picture has tainted the whole world, confused the whole world. As if this picture makes it as if the children of Israel were Europeans. Now, look at it good because remember, the children of Israel lived in the land of Egypt, Africa. It gets very hot there. Now, they, the children of Israel, our ancestors were slaves down in Egypt in the hot sun. So, we know that the Egyptians due to their paintings and due to the tombs of the kings, the pharaohs, they were Negroid or of, of the Negro race. They had features that, are, that were very dark and coarse woolly hair. So Moses and the Hebrews lived among them. And Moses, in the scrolls or the Torah, some say the Bible, Moses would, was looked upon as an Egyptian. They could not tell that Moses was a Hebrew on at least two occasions in the scrolls. So, if the Egyptians were of Negroid features, then this man right here is far from being a Hebrew. And so, I, I just wanted to show, and, and because this is the kind of stuff that has confused the whole world. I just wanted to show for you Hebrews who want to argue and kick and cry about other Hebrews identifying America as Babylon, shut up, shut up. And because the film industry is so powerful, it has deceived the whole world and spread these images around the whole world. Now, people really believe that these people and their descendants are the children of Israel. Let's pull up another picture here. Now this right here is Mel Gibson, another Hollywood actor. This film was called Passion of the Christ. He is, this picture is supposed to be the Messiah. Powerful Hollywood around the whole world. The, this 
film has gone out in these pictures and people really believe that the Hebrew Israelites look like this. And so we can prove it just in the scriptures because let's do John 1. John 1. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yah and the word was Yah. He was with Yah in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and in that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness never understood it. I want to go to the part where it says, through him all things were made. So that means the sun was made through him. The very sun that heats up the earth, that lights up the earth. This man right here would not be able to stand in the sun without being sunburned. So he could not stand in the sun like the true Hebrews with the melanin. So therefore, if this is what the Messiah looked like, the same sun through him, all things were made, the sun that was made through him would burn his skin and possibly give him skin cancer if he stayed out in it day after day in the hot Egyptian heat or the heat of Africa, period. See, and this is confusion. Because because of these pictures and the picture of Cesare Borgia, who also have, has been spread around the world for centuries as being the Messiah, his, his photo, his image. Because of this, the whole world is confused. But more important, what I'm linking it to America because America and its film industry has been very, very powerful in spreading and keeping these images alive. Because of this, now, even to this day, people believe that the children of Israel are these people. That they actually, that the Hebrews <laughs> look like this. If you notice, everyone is wearing hats. That region of the world, if you are of this hue or skin complexion, you would definitely need to wear hats with a brim. Otherwise, otherwise, over a period of time, you most likely would have skin damage. You'd be dealing with uh, skin cancer and different things like that. But because of these photos and the films, the whole world believe this, and they have confused the whole world. This is America, confusion, the land of confusion. So all you Hebrew Israelites who are upset and bothered because other Hebrew Israelites identify America for what she is, the land of confusion, Babylon. Shut up. Because you have no argument. This is pretty obvious. Get that titty out your mouth. Stop crying. Let's move on. Let's go to Let's go to Revelations. Maybe we can go to the 17th chapter. I heard a, a, a pastor. He was going hot and heavy. Going hot and heavy last week, I believe. He was talking about Babylon. And he was saying that uh, America's not Babylon. Rome is. I I agree with him partially. So Re Revelation seventeen does speak. It does speak of Rome. It's talking about Rome, but it goes a little more deeper than that. As you read on and you go into this, 
you have to be blinding yourself if you don't see more more of it than Rome. See that this is more than Rome. Because, and they keep talking about, you got to read it in context. You can't always read all this and go by, or if you read it in context, you're correct. Okay, so it talks about chariots and horses. and do, Are we still uh, in the earth uh, going back and forth and with horses and chariots? See, this is what I'm talking about. They try to make themselves sound smart, but then at the end of the day, they, they make, they're making themselves look stupid to me. Look, let's look at this. Let's look at um, Revelation. Let's start at Revelation 17, 1 through 3. Let's, let's get down to the Bible. See, I'm an investigator. And I, I'm an investigator by trade. That, that's been my call. And I investigate. So what I do, an, investi an investigator does not come to just conclusions just because they want to. Because this is what they want. No, what they do is they, we look at the evidence, right? And then based upon the evidence... And based against other knowledge, knowledge and and things that have happened, have occurred in the past, and what things look like from the past times, and we put things together based upon the evidence, and then we come to a conclusion wherever it may lead us. Okay, so I'm an investigator. So let's look at 171. See, I don't just go by just okay. Well, I'm just gonna. This is what I want to believe, or this is what somebody taught me. I look at it and read it. I'm talking about even in this word. I read it. And then I then look at all the evidence and then I come to a conclusion, right? Of my own, a conclusion by the evidence based on the facts and then the and then assumptions off of the facts. Because you have to then come to to assumptions at times because Everything is not all the way there. That's what an investigator do. He put things together and then he comes to the conclusion. So let's go Revelation 17 and 1. And I'm going to read 17, 1 through, through 3. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth, sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay. All right. So right there, we talking about Roman. Let me let's let's move down. Let's let's verify. Let's verify that. Let's let's get some more evidence that in that particular part we can come to the conclusion that it was referring to Rome. So let's go Revelation 17, Revelation 17 and 9. And here is the mind which have wisdom. The seven hills are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Right? So, seven hills are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So, we do know, you can look it up. Rome sits on seven hills. They even got the names of them. Okay? So, and we also know that Rome was very, very powerful in its time. Okay? Very powerful. And so, I'll go. I'll, we'll go even a little deeper into that. We'll go. That's like the good talk about the government of Rome. But we'll go into the religious side of Rome too. Um, and so, once we get there, we'll we will get to the bottom of of Rome and its power and who Rome is in this. Okay. So let's. So we know that Rome sits on the seven hills, and it mentions that. Right here, that the seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sits. So we can refer to it as Rome. All right. So I'm going to move down to Revelations. I'm going to go back to Revelation 17. 
5 through 6. 17, 5 through 6. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Yahshua. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So, you know, right here it says Jesus. But I, I, when I see Jesus, I just replace it with Yahshua because that, that's what it's supposed to be in there anyway. So, um, and, okay, so let's, let's talk about this right here. Five. So it says, Mystery Babylon, the great, a mystery. See, a mystery, meaning that a mystery, then it's going to be not so a mystery is a secret mystery. It is G3466, a secret mystery, the idea of silence imposed by initiation into a religious rites. Mystery. That is the Hebrew concords for mystery. Mystery Babylon. So it's not going to be right out. Babylon is just not right. It's mystery, the great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth. So what is that? It says a lot right here. It says that this mystery Babylon is great, okay? So we know when we say great, that means it's powerful, right? And for something to be powerful, it must have what? Military might, in this earth at least. That's one of the things that, that's one thing that it's going to happen. All right. So it also states that this Babylon, this mystery Babylon is a mother, a mother. So that means if it's a mother, it must have offspring. Otherwise, it's not a mother. How can it be a mother if it doesn't have offspring? Okay. Uh, a woman has the potential to be a mother, but if she has no offspring, she's not a mother. So we know that it's speaking it, of a mother, it must have offspring. So Babylon, Mystery Babylon the Great is a mother, so she has offspring. So we'll get to that. She is a harlot, meaning that she is a whore, right? That means what she does is immoral. She's immoral, right? An abomination of the earth. Okay, so... So when it says that she's a mother, let's let's talk about the mother. And this is going into the religious side of it. Rome. Roman Catholicism. Rome founded Roman Catholicism. And that is a religious system that has all these denominations under her. All the names of the church, all the different churches, the different denominations come right out of Catholicism, whether, whether it be Pentecostal, right, Methodist, Evangelical, you can name it, Baptist, Presbyterian, all these different denominations which can be found. Nowhere in the scripture where it says, do not add to the word nor take from it. But they, this comes from the great whore, which is right here, a mother. She has children. And those children are all those denominations, right, of the church. All these different denominations. And so, each one of them have their own abomination. Like, they agree on some things, but not all, right? So, just like, let's start from the mother. The mother is Catholicism. Okay, so Catholicism says that the priests are not allowed to get married. So, where did that come from? Where is that written? When Aaron, the brother of Moses, Moshe, he was the first high priest, and did he not have children? 
Was he not married? Did he not have children? Didn't he reproduce? You see, this right here is, but this is what, what, what we're talking about as far as an abomination, right? Because that even goes against be fruitful and multiply. Now, if the priest cannot get married and they cannot have children, right? So then there was a line set up for priests that y'all set up with the what? The Levites, right? So if they can't reproduce, then how, how can you have a line of priests coming down that tribe? So that whole tribe wouldn't even continue in the priesthood because you're not allowed to get married if you're a priest. All right? And that causes so many problems. So, But then you may have, let's pick one, evangelicals. Oh, you can get married. But on the other hand, you are about white supremacy and racism. We can go on. Each one of these, the daughters of the harlot, the mother, the daughters of this mother harlot, oh, they all got issues going on. But the one thing they do have in common, the one thing that they do have in common is that they all violate the Ten Commandments right off the top, right off the top. Every one of them, every one of them violate the commandment where it says, have no images, right? And they all, all go under the image and under Jesus Christ. Or Jesus. Let's go. Let, 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 just get, let's just get it. Just let's just get it. Just just for so nobody can't say anything. Let's get it. Ten commandments right here. And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, and this is starting for Exodus 20, verse for Exodus 21. Let's go. And Yahweh spoke, spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which have brought thee of the land, out of the land of Egypt, aka Misraim, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt, remember, whenever you see Egypt, Egypt means bondage. Thou shall have no other, no other gods before me, no other mighty ones before Yah. Right? Thou shalt not make until here it is the fourth one. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So right there, all Babylon, Catholicism, all her babies, because she's a mother, Remember, evangelical, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, you name it all, the different ones, holiness, Pentecostal, all of them come out of her and they all do what? Violate this fourth commandment. Why? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. There is a image of Jesus. That's how you know that it's not that he's not the one. There's an image. An image. Now don't, don't lie to yourself. There's an image of Jesus, Cesare Borgia. That image on the cross, that cross, that's an image. The, the, the white man that they put on it and they named him Jesus, that's an image. All that come from Rome, Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism, the mother, the mother of Harlots. She is the mother. I just want to show you right there, all of them agree with this. Ask them who, who do they worship? Who is the Messiah? And they said Jesus Christ. And they got that cross up, even on sitting on top of the churches. You can go inside. You can look at the windows. A lot of them are taking it down now, but they have images all, all on the windows with flying baby angels that's naked. 
a bunch of, you know, just people just going, you know, like uh, all um, half naked and all this, all over the stained glass. They got on top of the churches. They got big crosses. They got stone. When you walk, go up to the churches, you have images. You got uh, praying hands with people standing there, praying hands with uh, images that's supposed to be Mary and Joseph. They, they have definitely inside, you got uh, all kinds of images of Jesus on the cross. That's an image right there. That right there. That right there. Right there. There it is. She's an abomination. Okay. And they are her children. Okay. So let's 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 just move on. And I I want to show you some more things. I, we can get to this uh Babylon thing. Let's see here. All right, okay. All right, let's go down here. Okay, so look. Right here, this book right here, this is a, the Nelson's Quick Reference Bible Dictionary that I, I'm referencing here. And if you look at page 73 right here, right here, it says, When the Jews, however, were carried captive into Babylon, they thought they recognized it in the famous temple of Belus, the modern, the modern famous temple of Belus, the modern Bera Nimrod. So when our ancestors, they got here Jews, but I'm going to say the Hebrews, when they were taken captive and gotten taken into Babylon, they they thought they saw the Tower of Babel because it was in that area. And that, that's what they thought they saw, you know, but it was, a, it was a mound they thought they saw. But let's move down here right here. Babylon, in the ap ap apocalypse, is the symbolic name by which Rome is denoted. Revelations 14, 3, 8, 17, 18. The power of Rome was regarded by the latter Jews, talking about Hebrews, as was that of Babylon by their forefathers. So in other words, what this is saying is that the Hebrews that were taken into captivity during the power of Rome, when Rome, when Rome, conquered Jerusalem and subjected it to its power and it enslaved the Hebrews, our ancestors, and did all that. Well, during that time, they said that this power of Rome and this, this power that Rome has displayed is that of Babylon and it reminded them of Babylon even though those who were living in that time that were under the Roman rule did not live during the time of Babylon what they what they were doing was thinking of back to what they were told by their ancestors that was passed down from the time of Babylon so when Babylon ruled over the Hebrews and enslaved them that the ones who lived then passed the story down. So when Rome, because Babylon, the original Babylon, it, it, it was taken down, it fell in its time. And that's what Revelations is talking about as well. Because it's speaking of the Babylon, original Babylon, as also speaking of Rome as Babylon, and it's going to move on from there because it's passed down in the spiritual world. So, so now Babylon... So the ancestors, our ancestors, the Hebrews back then that were under Roman authority saw it as Babylon and they got that from their forefathers who told them, who passed it down, that what they went through with, the, with Babylon during the time of Nebuchadnezzar and the power of it and all those things. So they was like, it's what we're going through right now sounds like what, what was told to us, what they went through. When they were in captivity under Babylon, it seems like Rome is just like Babylon, just accord, just by getting information from their forefathers so they can relate to what their forefathers went through. So I say, oh, I wanted to point all that out to show that 
is passed down. The Babylon, the Babylonian and Babylon spirit is passed down. First of all, let's remember it's about confusion, but it's also about power. It's about military might. It's about political power. It's about military, military might, political power, and also power in religion. Those three things in confusion. This is all in Babylon, the Babylonian system. And it's all and it's all about defiance of the most high and wickedness and wickedness, a wicked system that defies the most high. Started with the Tower of Babel. I read it earlier, what they were doing. What they were doing was what they were doing was building a a a a temple or building building a a uh, a building that they wanted to do it in their minds that they could reach to heaven to make a name for themselves. So they basically was like, uh, we don't need uh, the, the the father, the creator. We we gonna make a name for ourselves in the heavens, okay? And and they got together and that's what they were doing. So you know Babylon, and that's they they want they want to operate in their own power and disregard the rule and authority of Almighty Yah. And so then when Babylon came along, so did that Babylon do the same thing in that same area. And the reason why it was named Babylon, why? Because the Tower of Babel was in that area. It was in that area. So um, Babylon is probably the capital city of the country, which is called in Genesis Shinar. So, yeah, at that time, the tower around here says right here, Babel, the Tower of Babel. You can see a picture right here. Babel is only mentioned once in the scripture in Genesis eleven forty eight. So basically, uh, Babylon, during the time of Nebuchadnezzar, is in that region and in that area. Like I said, when I read earlier, um, the Hebrews that were taken into captivity in Babylon, they thought that they had recognized it. They thought they had recognized the, the ruins of the of the Babylon Bab the uh, Tower of Babel. They thought they had saw the ruins of it. So let's move on right here. Englishheritage.org. Go to Englishheritage.org. You can find it. So let's look in here. Roman Britain. Rome's success was built on organized and practical application of ideas long known to the ancient world. The daily experience of most people in Britain were inevitably touched by its incorporation into the Roman Empire. So at one time, most people in Roman Britain made their living from a mixture of, of substance farming in exchange of specialized, specialist, specialist goods. So, so basically... Look, discover how the Roman conquest changed what people in Britain ate, and how they looked. So you can go down, and I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time with this. But what I'm doing is I'm showing you that at one time, Rome had basically conquered Britain. Britain was under Rome's authority, right? Britain was under Rome's authority, and... And so it basically, it shaped and made Britain. And let's see if I can find it. I was reading up on this. And so, I mean, it even changed with the people. Hey, so you think that this religious system of Rome, Catholicism, and all the ways of Rome and and uh, it's all is paganism, all that, the, the things that Rome did, the power, the way it operated. You think that it was not transferred into those that were under it, like Britain. Rome had a lot of provinces, and Britain was one. Here it is, right? Britain was, let, let's look at this. Britain was one of one of some 44 provinces which made up the Roman Empire at its height in the early 2nd century AD. You hear that? Britain was one was 
was one of 44. That's how powerful Rome was. Britain was just one of its provinces. So it ruled over Britain, right? And so the things of Britain are of Rome. I'm going somewhere with this, okay? Listen, in AD 43, Emperor Claudius launched his invasion of Britain. All right? So, so I, I mean, you can go deep into this if you want to go into it. I just don't want to go keep reading into that because my point was made as far as I'm making the connection that when you read Revelations, you got to look at the shift over a period of time. Okay, that spirit of Babylon moved through time. Okay, so it was on Babylon itself. Then, then Rome had the spirit of Babylon upon it. And that power and the whole religious and political system. And then it was Britain, Great Britain. And then I'm not going to beat around the bush. What, what is the child of Great Britain? Is it not America? America came straight out of Britain, right? And so America is the child of Britain. Britain is the child of Rome. Rome is the child of is the child of Babylon. See how, see where I'm going with this? Okay. So remember, remember, she is a mother, right? This whore is a mother, right? She produced, she produced Rome, she produced Britain. She produced America, okay? What they call the West, those countries that are uh, what they call the West, okay, Rome. Rome produced them, and she Rome is referred to as Babylon, and if she produced something, they are Babylon as well. All right, so let me, let me, let me move on to something else I want to show you right here. See this book right here? This book is, is, is really a good book. Afri African people and European holidays. You get this book. Esha Kamusa Barashango. This is book one. Okay. So, the author of the book. Let's go to page. What's, what's the page of this page? I think it's, I believe it's three. Yeah, page three in this book. I want to show you something to, just to piggyback off of Rome's domination of Britain and when when it ended. And so Britain ended up being having its own uh, autonomy apart from Rome. But by that time, it had already been, it's a child of Rome. Adopt this religious system, its political ways, everything. So it became another Babylon. Listen, I'm just going to read a part of this right here. The Protestant Reformation, and this is right here, very important. That is, those who protested against the Roman papacy and proclaimed themselves to be the purifiers of the European religion, commonly misnomered Christianity. You hear that? Did you hear that? Roman papacy proclaimed themselves to be the purifiers of European religion, commonly misnomer Christianity, began to gain recognition by the state when Henry VIII fancied that it could be a vehicle to help achieve his personal aims, the primary one being to divorce his present wife, Catherine of Aragon, and marry the young Anne Bullion. To fulfill this desire, it became necessary for Henry VIII to renounce the Roman papacy, the Pope of Rome. Now here it is. This is he's the king of Britain, but yet he had to renounce the Roman papacy just to marry his mistress and divorce his wife. So he had to get permission from where, from the Pope, and he had to denounce him and declare himself sole protector and supreme head of the Church and clergy of England. This did he because the Pope had refused to grant him his divorce. Henry then set up the Ang Anglican Church, the Church of England. Here it is, another baby. Here it is, the great whore, Catholicism. She had a baby right here. 
Anglican, the Anglican Church, the Church of England, and appointed Thomas Cramer as Archbishop of Canterbury, the center of England's would-be religious worship. Okay, so now we already see that they're trying to break away from the authority of his mother, Rome. And this is Britain. And look, the new ecclesiastic head and gratitude under Henry's command quickly annulled the marriage to Catherine, whereupon Henry VIII married Anne Bullion, who bore him the notorious queen Elizabeth I. Are we not familiar with that name? This somewhat dramatic move on the part of Henry VIII broke the powerful domination that Rome held, had held over England for centuries. Let me read this again. This somewhat, somewhat dramatic move on the part of Henry VIII broke the powerful domination that Rome had held over England for centuries. Now, Let's say, let's use Hebrew Israelites in America at this time or the Hebrew Israelites in England that were all taken, their ancestors were taken captive and put into slavery in these different various, in these two places. I mean, we were scattered. The tribe of Yehuda was scattered through the four quarters of the earth, or four corners of the earth, four quarters. So let's just speak for, let's say, England and the U.S. Now, don't we, do we not speak English? All our ways are pretty much of, of our rules. We, what do we do? We go to Sunday worship, and we'll get into that. We go to church you know, on Sundays when, when the scripture clearly says keep the Sabbath, which is the seventh day. Sunday is the first day, the opposite. Anyway, so let's look at it. So let's say that if Rome dominated what it says right here, powerful domination of Rome that had over England, if it dominated just like we're dominated, what happened? Did it not take on all the ways? Would it not have taken on all the ways of, of its dominator, that one that dominated it? Would it not take on all the ways of it? political, religiously, in every way, uh, and military, it, 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 all the ways of it. So right there, so we got proof right there that that the it was passed down, meaning that the uh, this system of Babylon was passed down from Rome to England. Well, let's go to. I got another one I want you to see here. This book right here. This one is a must read, especially for Hebrew Israelites. This is the book right here. Written by Alicia Israel. A message to the forgotten Israelites, African Americans, into Egypt again with ships. But I want to, I'm going to go to page 111. This right here, Constantine, the emperor of Rome. Constantine, which was championed by the Roman Catholic Church. Constantine, a sun worshiper, introduced legislation in March 321 AD, which reads as follows. As follows. On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest and let all workshops be closed. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits because of it. Because of it often happens that another day is not so suitable for grain growing or for wine planting. That's by neglecting the proper moment for such operation, the bounty of heaven should be lost. Sunday is observed as a day of worship today, not because, it says Christ here, not because Christ rose on Sunday, but because of a decree issued by Constantine, false teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. 
which have intoxicated the world with the wine of false doctrine. Thank you, right there. So, right here. This right here was legislation put in by Rome by which we would call today the ruler of Rome, the president, whatever you want to have it, the king of Rome, Constantine did it. And to this day, it was passed down to who? To Great Britain, England, all this, the religious system, the Sunday worship, Christianity, Catholicism, all its children were passed down to Great Britain. How, okay. And how do we know to this day, all, all those churches in all the churches over in Great Britain, what do they do? Okay, what do they do? They worship on Sundays. And not only that, remember the fourth commandment, have no images that I, I went over, have no images in the heavens of anything in the heaven, anything in the earth or anything in the sea, covered everything. You can't have no images. All of them, Great Britain. And I mean, I know this is spread around the world. We'll get to that. But I mean, you know, but let's focus on what's going on here right now. We're talking about Babylon, America. They crying out, stop, basically crying out. Stop calling America Babylon. It's not. It's not Babylon. Okay. So right here, just does America do the same thing? How about this government is closed down on Sunday? Why? Why is it closed down on Sunday, the government of America? Why? Because Britain ruled over America when it was being formed. All the people from Britain, all America is the, the, came, the people who came to America who basically stole this country and built up their 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 uh build this country up to be theirs are the children of who great britain they're english they came over here and took this country and they brought their babylonian ways that they took from england here and as they created this country right all let's go back babylon enslaved our people england enslaved our people i know the arabs did too but then England, America is the children of England, enslaved the Hebrew Israelites, our people too. All right. So all everything, and then the the, the religious part, England had, was very powerful in its day, and it still has power. And it ruled, right? It ruled over the earth. England had power like that in its day. And after it broke away from Rome and Rome fell at a time, England rose to power, right? You can still see them now pushing the, 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 the kings and queens of the earth. So, and then England, then England, baby, America came out of England and it grew to power, right? And it, 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 it defeated its own parent to gained its own autonomy, and it rose up in big strength with military might off the chain, right? And so there you have it right there. If America, if, if Babylon is wrong and Rome took England and England Carries all the spiritual things of Rome. Everything because spirits need embodiment. Spirits need a body. The people are acting in the way of Rome. Okay? It's governing. It's religious. It's, it's religious ways. It's military. It's acts. It's superiority. It's power. Is subjecting people to slavery and all kind, all that was passed down. And the same people were enslaved by these three powerful nations, the Hebrew Israelites. So now how you still want to tell me the U.S., you still want to tell me that America is not the modern day Babylon? 
Okay. Okay. Let's look, look. Let's just I could at this point right now, I could basically just drop the mic and walk away. Right? I could drop the mic and walk away right now. But let's go here. Let's go to Revelation 15. Let's go to Revelation 15. We have some more fun here. See, I'm an investigator. I don't just just say, well, I want it to work. I want it to fit. You know, hey, I even question my own stuff. I'd be like, hey, you know, I could do better. I need to do better. This one ain't, this This don't, don't add up. All right. So Revelation 17 and 15. I want to go to 17 and 15. Let's see. Okay, so no, that's not, we already went through that. Let's go. We want to go to Revelations 17, 16 through 18. No, wait a minute, I'm sorry. 15, let's go to 15. Yes, Revelation 17, 15. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the Lord sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay, so so now, you know, it said that earlier in Revelations, it says that the horse sit up on many, many waters. It sit on many waters. But then right here is telling you that the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sit up are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So basically what that's saying is, is that water flows. Water flows. Water it goes everywhere, right? And it's powerful. And what it does is it moves in a path of the least resistance, but it's coming through, right? And if it's something that's blocking it and it builds up, it can knock it and knock it down. So, but the people, what it's saying, what it's saying is, is she's sitting on the people, sitting on their minds, sitting on their lives sitting on the people, meaning that her ways are upon the people. She's sitting in their hearts, meaning that what are they doing? They're worshiping. They're worshiping an image of a man, Jesus, All right? A cross and all those things. What they're doing is worshiping an image. That's one thing. And it's out of the many things, right? So they, they are Ignoring the Sabbath day and keeping the Sunday. I know I made that word up, the Sunday. So they keep they keep Sunday. They don't keep the feast days. They worship. I mean, they uh, keep all these uh, hella days, these man made uh, days like Easter, uh, Christmas. Halloween, all these celebrations, all these different days. Now they even got the new, the, the, the latest one. The latest one is they're celebrating, uh, what is it, uh, Pride Month and all that kind of stuff. Not even a day, it's a month. Wow. So these, this is what, what they're doing and this is passed down from Babylon, okay? And it's a spirit, and so it sits on the people. Let's go to, and these, let's go to Revelation 17, 16 through 18. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For Yah have put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Yah shall be fulfilled. Okay, so now that right there, now this is covering more than just, okay, so we know that the original Babylon fell, right? We know that it had went through a time of, you know, down. It, had went, it went down. Okay, so now even in these times, 
it's speaking to eternity. And that's one thing about understanding the Bible, and especially Revelations. He says, I am Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. Yah is giving the prophet a vision and through time, the beginning and the end, and he's from the eyes of Yah who sees all at once. He sees and knows everything. So our finite minds, he's trying to give us a glimpse into the way he see it, everything at once, right? So, so now you can't just pin something down and say, oh, it happened then, but it happened, it's happening now. Two, it's happened then and it's happening now. So let's move on from that right there. So Yahweh had put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Yah shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou saw is that great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. Now, the original Babylon, that fits that, right? It fits that. It fits Rome, when Rome was at its height of power, which was referred to as Babylon as well, even by the, the Hebrews who were under Rome's domination at the time, during, during the time of King Herod, and during the time even when Yahshua was in Jerusalem and walking the face of the earth, right? So Rome was dominating then, and so it fits Rome in, because it says, is the great city which reigned up over the kings of the earth. At that time, Rome was there. And so then there came the time when, when Great Britain was in power like that, right? So it's fitting, not just, and I'm saying I'm an investigator, it's fitting over the period of time. So now, what? America had came to power even more powerful than his mother. Military might as had, right? And it don't tell me it did not rule over kings of the earth. Why? Because, you know, the most powerful thing is what? Money. So we know that America, right, is was was just recently it's been revealed that, and I mean this is common knowledge, that they are now starting to trade countries and I guess kings or rulers are now saying, hey, forget the American dollar. All goods and services throughout the whole world were being traded in U.S. dollars. That's how powerful the U.S. is and was. Okay? So they are now just coming to take her down, right? Because they're saying, you know, we can't do nothing with her power against her when we're trading in U.S. dollars, when the whole money system is based upon the U.S. So, because why? Because the U.S. can then what? Put sanctions on everybody because she controls the money system. Okay? So, don't tell me that the U.S. is not a part of the Babylonian system. So, so now the question would be, the question would be, okay, now, let's go to Revelations 18. The question would be here. The fall. And after these things, I saw another angel, and this is 18 and 1, I seen another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen and fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the whole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, that's the question. Okay, so now is it talking about America at this time? Who's in power? Okay, Babylon doing Nebuchadnezzar time. They're not in power right now. And so you got people saying that it is Rome. It's the Vatican. It's Rome. It's the Vatican. Okay. 
All right, so you're going to say that. All right, let's look at the evidence. Let's look at the evidence. Let's read on. Let's do 18.2 again. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hole of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Now I heard a pastor Going hot and heavy, knocking down America. It's shorting out people if you say America is Babylon. And, and he was going hot and heavy in Revelation 17. And he was like, you know, on a roll. And, you know, you got to read this in context. And you got to know this and that. And he was gone, right? But when he got to 18 and 3, he I was waiting because I wanted to see how he going to do this one. He said, yeah. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of earth have committed fornication with her. And I was like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true, that's true. And that's talking about Babylon. You can you can say that's talking about the original Babylon. And it's talking about Rome as Babylon. Because, yeah, Roman Catholicism and all that. And that spirit of Roman Catholicism and, and the ways of Rome, all that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking about that. Yeah, fornication, yeah. Uh, fornication meaning uh, the worship of you know images and all these things that go against the father and all the things that Rome did you know they they uh, added paganism to the Hebrew way of life that instead of ha having the Passover they put Easter in there and all these different things taught the people to worship on Sundays and, and Easter and all this different these different days and all kinds of stuff. It, it, we can go on. This is what, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's talking about right here. Fornication. That's what that fornication is. It's idolatry, you know. I worship idols and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's what Rome, Roman Catholicism. So I'm agreeing with him on that. Yeah, so he's saying it's talking about Rome. But I want to hear what he said when he got to this part. He said, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. He leapfrogged that right there. That part right there, he ain't say nothing about. I want to hear him explain that right now, in these last of last days, that the Vatican and Rome made the merchants, the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the Vatican. Right now, in these days of time, the abundance of her delicacy, even with Rome. Is Rome the center of commerce at this time? Is wrong that he leapfrogged and he ain't say nothing about it. He couldn't know why because he ain't have nothing. But he came hot and heavy, just throwing, just throwing his punches and talking all this stuff. But I'm going to say this right here, right now, because this is common knowledge. If I tell you what, the merchants of sea definitely in these times has got rich off, off America. Why not? Why not say it? It's true. Look, America sold his people out. Look, everything in America, made made in Taiwan, okay, made in Japan. Oh, we buy everything that's made here, made there. All the merchants of sea get rich off. Why? Because America, the way the system is set up, that the people can live off of loans and never, ever, ever get out of that hamster wheel of just being in debt. So something that should cost a house that should cost no more than ten thousand dollars will cost a, no two hundred thousand. Why? Because you can get a loan and never pay it off and die paying paying for it, and then the bank take it back. Okay. So in other countries, a lot of other countries, not all, but some those that are non-Western countries, that you don't have that system. So. Whatever you have, you have. You buy what you buy. So you you know, so they can't inflate the prices. But if you can inflate the prices like in the US, so now all the merchants of the sea and all those who are um, manufacturers and all these different countries and these rich billionaires and everything who own these companies, they can sell to America. Why? Because they can inflate the prices and make all this money 
pay their pay their uh, workers low wages and then make all this money in America. Why? Come on, let's think about it. A pair of tennis shoes in America. You know them tennis shoes? Let's say some Jordans. Let's take Jordans and this. I'm going right here. Uh, what it say? The merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Think about it. You can go right now to a store and look at a pair of Michael Jordan tennis shoes that cost $500. They could be made overseas somewhere and it cost them 15, 20 cents to make it. But if you try to sell those same shoes in the area in which they were put together, they won't go for no more than a, probably 80 cents or a dollar. But you can bring them to the United States and sell them for $500. See, this right here fits America right here, right now, in these times. See, I told you. Babylon is a spirit and it's passed down, right? This right here, he leapfrogged that. That brother leapfrogged that. He didn't want to talk about that. He he knew he that that he's talking about is 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 uh is the Vatican and is talking about the Vatican and he's talking about Rome in these times. Okay. Come on now. Is Rome right now and the Vatican doing this? Making the merchants of the sea. I mean, I'm not saying they're not bringing in any kind of, they're not, uh, you know, uh, buying anything in Rome or nothing like that. You know, people got lead, people still eating and all that. But not on that scale right here that we're speaking of, right? It made it making wax riches, basically. It's basically isolating a particular place. Now, Rome and Babylon, in, the, in their time of their great power, did these things. Okay, that same spirit has been passed down to Britain and then passed down to America. Okay? Let's move on right here. Let's move on. I told you I'm an investigator. I'm going to look at these things and I investigate. Hallelujah. Let's go to nine. Let's go to nine. 18 and nine. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lamb it for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Now this right here, this the part right here, is it talking about the Vatican? Is it talking about uh, Rome period, the city of Rome, the Vatican? Was it talking about America? So in America, is it talking about Washington, D.C.? Is it talking about New York? The New York is, when it comes down to trade, New York has been the one of the biggest known places, okay, the, the, the world stock, the, the stock market, the stock exchange, everything was sold, even our ancestors and slavery was sold on, on the uh, stock market, okay, the world trade, okay. So I'm just going to put that out there, right? So is it New York? Is it, I'm, I'm not even going to sit here and tell you that I know. I'm just putting evidence out there, and I'm just simply saying that, yeah, in this right here, the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, oh, yeah, that's talking about the religious side of it, and, and which spills over to the political side and all that kind of stuff, and it spills over to uh, commerce and all that. But they will lamb it for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Was Rome, when she was at the height of her power, was she smoking and burning? Was she? Was what about Babylon itself? Okay. But it says mystery Babylon. But see, this right here, these are the things that we must ponder on and pray for understanding. Let's move on. Let's move on because people try to lock stuff down, but it's not fitting all the way. And I'm one to admit that you got to still... Look at it, and you still have to say, but is it really, really giving you exactly who, what, what nation at this particular time that it's speaking about? But the evidence, according to the way things look right now, Babylon is, uh, the, the Vatican ain't, ain't, ain't producing that, that kind of wealth and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's. Wait a minute, let's go on. Let's move on. And 
Let's read uh, 18.10. Stand in afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Okay. Again, still, still looking to the evidence. Which city is he talking about? You say America, I heard a man tell me, well, America is not a city, it's a country. So let's say, yeah, the original Babylon was a was the city, but guess what? It it had the power over that whole region, which basically is a city that's over a country. The same thing, the, the, in the U.S., right? Washington, D.C. And New York and all that combination, they, they run the whole country, right? So, so let's move on right here. So 18 and 12, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. We still use all these things. That stuff, everything that we got, it, you could say is is coming into America. And cinnamon and and odors and uh, and ointments and frankincense and and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. See, let's get to this right here. I love this right here, 18 and 13. They they love to say, I hear, man, you got to read it in context, trying to sound all studious and all intelligent like you because you don't read it in context. See, that's why, now this right here shows you that that reading it in context, no, you need the Ruach HaKodesh and you need to be truthful. Because if I read this in context and I say, well, let me stay in context. It says right here, horses and chariots and slaves. What does what does context mean, right? What it does, context means that the, the wording and the things that are around it, what it's speaking of and what's happening, then you know, you will know what's going on. You can come to the conclusion more by that, right? Okay, so we're talking about reading it in, reading it in context. So we read it in context, it's sure, surely not talking about it can't be talking about no modern uh, city or no modern country today if we just say we're going to stick with the context of it because what modern city today did you know the people are still going around in horses and chariots? Okay? Talk to me now. No. So you have to bring, you know that this was written in ancient times and that's what the prophet saw at that time. These are the things that he knew. But Yah knows all things. When he put that down, he still was speaking of these times too. So those chariots now, those horses are what cars and trucks, horsepower, right? Those the cars they say they have horsepower. Those chariots and all that, that's trucks and things like that, uh, you know. And so, and it talks about slaves and souls of men. Okay, so we do still have slavery going on in the earth today in places. But let's just say uh, the the. The majority of the people, even here in this system, Babylon, are in slavery. Why? Because they have set up a new slave system. We work, right, for other people. We work, and, and they tell you what days you can have off, and what days, with how many hours you work, when you could take your lunch break. So you are in, in a servitude, in a slave role. They say, well, no, that's not really slave. You're getting paid for it. Well, you getting paid for it with, with cash. Well, yeah, but even uh, when our ancestors were in bondage, they didn't get paid cash, but I mean, they were able to eat, at least to live. But in this time, so you're in slavery. Why? Because if you don't work, there is a punishment. There's a punishment, right? Because if you don't, what they going to do? Take away your job. And to take away your job, then what? How you going to survive? You don't have no money, but the system is set up for that, right? It's set up for that. Like they set the schools up and everything. Not te teaching people to be self-sufficient. They teach everybody to get jobs for the most part. And the small elite get have the knowledge of creating wealth for themselves by having people work with them like slaves. You say, well, come on, Eric. Come on, come on, come on. Best well, you know. We, But let's look at this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it like this. I went to school. And I, I went all through college and all that. 
Not one time did they teach me how to excavate and pull the minerals and different things out of the soil of the earth to put together metals and, and fabricate and make a car. They didn't teach me all that. They didn't teach me how to make my own house from ground up where I can do. They didn't teach me that. Even down to, what about, oh, what, wait a minute, we all wear shoes. How come they never taught us how to just make shoes? How about even to make a watch? None of that was taught. All those things that we use every day, all day, they never, that's not what they teach. They teach you to be a worker. Because if they teach the people, oh, how to make, okay, well, we've been, we've been had cars and we had all kinds of things, air conditioning, all these things. Teach, no, no, don't, don't teach me how to fix them. Teach me how to make them. Teach me how to make them from scratch. Teach me. They ain't teaching us that. Why? Because it's a system of slavery. They want to keep you as an employee, which is a form of slavery. Why? Because you need them. Tell your supervisor, tell your boss, oh, I'm not tired today, I'm not coming in. And you don't have any sick days, and you don't have any vacation days. See what happens. Okay? So don't, don't give me that, oh, come on, Rock, it's not slavery. Yeah, okay. It's slavery. It is slavery. But see, they talk about, let's go back to context, reading stuff in context. They didn't even cut it out. So I'm going to give you, here's the definition. The circumstance that formed the setting for an event, statement, or idea in terms of which it can be fully understood or assessed. Okay? So basically, to fully understand something, you got to uh, look at the circumstances and the settings of an event. Right? To fully understand it. So... These these blabbermouths that be sitting around trying to be so studious and using their saying this because they're covering up their weaknesses because they're trying to make something fit that does not fit. They're saying, well, you got to read it in context. All right, well, I'm reading this in context right here, right now. It's talking about horses, chariots, and slaves and souls of men. All right. So so then and if that's be the case, then if this is in context, this right here, Revelations 18 and 13, does not apply in these days and times. So this part right here already happened. It ain't none of that. Don't we don't have to worry about that no more. So it's not, it's done. It's already happened. All right. So if we go by what they saying, reading everything in context. So let's move on. Let's move on. These, these people, they just, you know, like to try to sound so smart and intelligent. But sometimes, you know, just be real. Just be real. They skip over that. Read that in context. Let me see somebody riding around in a chariot right now with a whip. Come on now. All right, so let's move on. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Let's read. I'm going to just go ahead and read it down. Let's go start back at 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, talking about Babylon, and all things which or dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. What? So you mean to tell me right now the merchants of the sea are made rich? I mean, they. this is speaking about a, in these times, if we we not talk if we talk about Rome back in her times when she was at the height of her prosperity, yup, Paris, Rome, all we can talk about that. Yeah, yup, yup. So yeah, yeah. So so she is Babylon. So but right now she not at the height of that. So all the merchants and uh, we, we talk about these times and this is the end of the end of because when the Messiah worked to face the earth, it was the end. It was at the end. But this is the end of the end meaning that once he did what he did that was the that right there was the end of the days that means that it was within the last days when he came and he rectified salvation for those who will be saved that right there was the last days so anything after that was the last in the last of the last days so right now we in the last of the last days and we can tell by all the things that happen and that are occurring if we if we then 
um, match it up with with the, with the uh, word with the with the uh, Torah. So merchants of the of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. So right now the merchants will stand far off from the Vatican city, the Vatican. They're going to stand far off, my friends, and they're going to be weeping and wailing because she made them rich. And they seeing that, oh no, the one that made us rich, the Vatican, in these days and time. Stop playing. <laughs> and saying, alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster, all the company and ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? So let's look at 19, back to reading in context. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping. Well, it's Alas, Alas, the great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for one hour is she made dusty. Does that sound like right now in this time? Uh, the dust on the head and all that. That sound like back during, maybe during the time of when Rome was in power or even during the original Babylon. Nevertheless, these words are speaking through time. It's speaking through time. It's speaking through time, even up until now. Why? Because the spirit of Babylon is still alive today. So when Babylon fell in its power, it still passed on all its ways. It did. It passed on all its ways. And especially through its religious system, Roman Catholicism. So, let's go here. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Yahweh has avenged you on her. Okay, so you know in here it talks about, I heard a brother tell me that he said, well, you, you, the, the U.S., it says that she has the blood of the saints, the blood of the saints. Uh, let's go, it's 17, 5, and 6. Let's go to that, right to back to that, 17, 5, and 6. And it says, he was like telling me that, you know, the, the U.S. ain't the blood of the, the prophets and not, you know, the, the, uh, the U.S. didn't kill a prophet or nothing like that. You know, the U.S., of course, the U.S. wasn't, wasn't around and, you know, something like that. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Okay, let's address this right here. Again, like I said, it's speaking through time, right? So it's speaking of Babylon, the original Babylon. It's speaking of Rome. And it's speaking of that Babylon, which is in these times, right? That power system. Now you're going to tell me that the blood of the saints or the blood, let's say the blood of the Hebrew uh, prophets, the he blood of the Hebrew prophets, the blood of all of them are not, the United States did not spill the blood. Ha, I got you. It did. Why? Because who is in the hands of the United States would, would try. The tribe of Yehuda, the tribe what they call Judah, right? Was was Yehuda, Judah not a prophet? Huh? So if his blood is in us, how many of us have they have spilled his blood, right? Because we are of the tribe of Yehuda. That means that Abraham is our father. Yisak Isaac, Yisak who is Isaac, is our father. Yaakov, Jacob is our father. Those they have our forefathers. Right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are our forefathers. All right, let me skip over all the other names. But let's get down to the 12 tribes of Israel came out of 
out of Yaakov, which is a.k.a. Jacob. Yehuda, a.k.a. Judah. That's us. So if you spill our blood, which they have spilled, there is no argument, right? As not as that not as if if we are the blood of Jehu, uh, Yehuda Judah, and you spill our blood, right here it fits. Why? Because we and no no who else came out of the tribe of Yehuda, born of Yehuda, the Messiah Yeshua. His blood is in us. He's the first of many brothers. His blood is in us. So when you spill our blood, you are spilling the blood of the prophets because the prophet blood is in us. What? Because it's passed down. It's passed down through the DNA. It's passed down. So it does fit. It does fit. And then I had a brother, and I'm going to say it because I sit there and listen to him and, you know, I try to support him after, you know, we parted. And I listened to him. And he says, he was saying some things and he was leaving things out to justify. And I knew he was talking about me, our conversation with respect because, because he he uh, was saying America is not Babylon, but she is a part of Babylon. He says the spirit of Babylon. So I'm like, well, if she is of the spirit, then she is Babylon. I mean, spirit needs a body, right? So anyway, but he, he, he says that America is not Babylon. So anyway, so... He then I heard him say that, you know, going to Africa, you know, you would you you's like you 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 got to do something to the fact that you being scared, you run it, but it's gonna be everywhere, and you know this 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 thing that's coming on us, you know, on the earth is gonna be everywhere, and you know you you running, and I'm like no, I'm not running, or you're afraid of something, and I'm like no, 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 and he says that. You got to know that, don't you know about Jacob's trouble? And then I say, and I, I heard him talk about this, and I said, Jacob's trouble? Yeah, Jack, it's, it's, it's time of Jacob's trouble. So I said, this is what I said, because I'm going to clarify this, just in case you hear. I said, the time of Jacob's trouble began in 70 AD, and even up until now. So he said, but now it's going to be even worse. Now I said, wait a minute, it's not going to get no worse than the, the, the transatlantic slave trade for us. It can't get worse. So now he was trapped when I said that because I was like, you don't know that Jacob's trouble started in 70 AD when Titus laid siege to Jerusalem and the people were scattered out, murdered and, and taken into slavery and beaten and all kinds of stuff. The Messiah talked about it, that it was going to happen in Matthew 24, I think in Luke 21. You look at all that. And you and, and up until now, and the and the and the last of it was this last captivity, and so where y'all said that he would scatter us into all nations, and so now we was brutalized in that to no end. And I was like, it can't it can't get no worse. He talking about Jacob's trouble as if it was just starting to come now. And so when I said that, he he came back with, I say, how how this been since seventy A.D. And up until now, it can't get no worse than we went through the transatlantic slave trade. It didn't get anytime they was feeding our babies to alligators, cutting stomachs open, pulling babies out, burning us alive, strapping us to horses, two horses, and splitting us into two. You name it, working us all day long and beating us, whips on our backs. I mean, you name it. It was nothing that they had not done, raping, all kinds of hangings and torment, torture every day, selling babies. Uh, making sex farms, producing babies, forcing sons to uh, reproduce with mothers, you name it, there's nothing that they did not do to our people, right? So how could it get any worse than that? So when I said that to him, he did not want to, because he was taught from what he told me, he was taught when he went to this school that no matter what, if you get, when, whenever you are uh, in a debate, they, the school taught him that even though you know you're on the losing end of it, how to win anyway. And I said, that's not good. I said, that's not good because I knew that was evil. That's why I'd be like, if I hear a place like that, I'm running from it. So, so he said, no, no, because at this time, it's going, it's salvation is at stake. 
So I'm like, it can't get no worse than that. All that stuff that happened, beating out babies, the alligators and all this and that, this and that and all the stuff. I just mentioned, he said, well, no, but this time salvation is at stake. I just left it alone because I knew that at that point, there's no need to beat nobody over the head. He, his only answer was no, this time salvation is at stake. Salvation been at stake ever since, ever since Father Adam and Mother Hawaii, a.k.a. ate the forbidden fruit. When they did what they did, salvation was at stake from then up until the very end. Okay? So I didn't say nothing. I was like, this this time salvation is at stake. Salvation has been at stake. So, and another thing, I was like, okay, so, I, and, 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 you know, I listen to people and everything, and when you tell me that this same person told me that, oh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, the Almighty been talking to me. I'm going to show you some things. We're not even supposed to be keeping the feast days. Why is that? Because the temple ain't built. We ain't in the land. And the temple ain't built. We ain't even supposed to be keeping the feast days. I don't say much. Sometimes I know stuff and I just don't say nothing. Because when you tell me that the Almighty giving you information, then I can't go against it. Because how am I going to convince you when you think the Almighty told you that? But I know it's not lining up with the word. Because some of the right there written in some of what it says, it says, this is an everlasting, everlasting ordinance. And it also says, say the temple is not built, but didn't it say your body is the temple of Yeshua? Your body is the temple of Yeshua at this point. So the temple is built in that sense. You spoke keep these feast days. When you know to keep them, then you keep them. See, because you got to know these things because, first of all, if, if the feast days were not important, why, would I, why, why did our enemies make up their own days and keep us from keeping them? They wiped them out. They like, we didn't even, we was put to sleep because they wiped it out. They didn't let our ancestors keep the feast days. So they came up with their own days. That's what Satan did to keep us from keeping the feast days. And we still keeping all of them. Them, them, them hell, hell, hell days or whatever them days is made up by by the Gentiles that are abomination that's coming out of Babylon, Babylonian systems, okay? So, you know, so, so stuff like that is, is what make me just say, no, nah, you know, my thing is, is that all of us, none of us are perfect and none of us know everything, but I know what I know. And so when I start hearing things like that and you start telling me things that the father telling you and then I hear something that don't line up with scripture and with the wisdom that y'all has given me, I'm not going um, to argue with you when you say, when you say y'all told you something, I, I shut down. I'll be like, all right. Well, so anyway, this thing with us and I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a video on, on uh, this thing about a lot of. Hebrew Israelites are awakening now they, they we want to return to the land from which we were stolen of course we're not going we're not saying oh we just gonna go and uh the land the land that was promised we're gonna go take it and all that kind of stuff that's not the mindset the mindset is is that the mindset is is that okay you know there is a place from which we were stolen and you know um the land the motherland. The motherland is broad. It's big. And so there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, uh, hey, you know, that land was good for us. Return to it. When the Messiah come, he's going to gather us from wherever we are. The four corners of the earth, which comes down to the four quarters, anywhere within is in, in, in anywhere within those corners. Let me go here. Revelations 24. I mean, not Revelations, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound and of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, from the four winds. And this Hebrew, here's get the winds, G417, the base, G109, wind, by implication, four quarters, by implications, what four quarters of the earth wind? So right here, the Hebrew concordance is telling you that when he says he's going to gather his elect, who is his elect? Who is his elect? The Hebrew Israelites. From the four winds, he's going to gather us 
from four winds. And it says, in the Hebrew Concordance, I'm going to make it clear, it says winds, the, and it's G417, from the base of G109, wind, plural, by implication, the four quarters of the earth. So if the earth is divided into four quarters, let's make a circle. Let's say it's a circle. Let's divide it into four quarters now. So if it's saying quarters in each one of those quarters, you could be anywhere in there. He's going to gather you from it. So if you return to the motherland, he can't get you. You're going to be in one of those quarters. And he knows who you are. He knows who you are. So let's kill that. Stop hating. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, uh, I'll do, I'm going to do a video on that. I'll do a video on that. And, uh, we're going we're gonna to get down to the bottom of that because everybody can go to Africa but us. Our own people complaining. Y'all scaring people. How about going to Africa? So we supposed to just say, oh, we can't move. We got to stay right here. Well, what about moving from one state to another state? We, we can do that, right? So what's the, what's the, what's the problem? What, what is the problem? All right, so this is the end. And uh, until next time.